Yo Aguan, hope you're having a great day. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to export your song to MP3 and WAV in Studio One. Now this is super important when you want to, first of all, turn your song file into a pre-master so you can bring it into your mastering track and super important when you want to turn your mastering file or your full finished song into a WAV or MP3 so that you can upload it to streaming services or the internet and just basically release it and put it out. So this is stuff you need to understand, the stuff you need to know how to do. Now, if you don't know who I am, I'm Jay Carter Ray from jaycarterray.com teaching you how to be better at music, online business and online marketing. This is the number one spot for musicians and creatives that don't want to be starving artists. So if that sounds like you click on that subscribe button check out the rest of the content on the channel because you will love it here guaranteed now let's get into this real quick so i've got a test song over here and i'm going to show you how to basically turn this into a pre master now in order to do this we want to go to song then we need to go to export mix down and here there are a few options we can deal with now generally if you want to create a pre master which is the song file that you'll bring into your mastering project you want it to be a wav file okay and we could set this at 44.1 kilohertz but i've just left it at 48 kilohertz so it doesn't make that much of a difference although your resolution should be 24 bit and using real-time processing is something that we need to discuss quickly now if you do not use real-time processing there is a small chance and i've seen it happen a few times where your file will glitch and it won't actually process in the way you want it to so you might want to enable real-time processing but real-time processing does take longer okay now when you've got this set up you can set up your export range between a loop or you can set it between song start and a song end marker and if you want to use the song start and song end marker then you need to make sure that your song length is the right length now my song length is not the right length it's going to five minutes right about now i need to get it to three minutes and 12 seconds now i've already made a video on how to change your song length but i'm going to show you real quick we're just, we're just going to speed through it i'm not going to go super in depth you can watch that video if you want to know exactly how to do it but i'm just going to quickly speed through it and get this to the right song length so let's get this to 97 There we go, that's left click and then dragging down. And then I'll apply this. And now our song length is where it needs to be. But also you could just use this loop marker to set where your song starts and where your song ends. So then we'll go to song and we'll go to export mix down and we'll choose where we want this to be. Now I'm going to export this and I'm gonna save this in here. We'll select that folder and this will save as a track called mix oh no we could we could change the file name here i just figured this out i've been letting my track names be called mix down every single time so let me write studio one tutorial pm for pre-master we want do not publish wave file and output main real-time processing we don't want to bypass master effects we want to write the tempo to audio files we don't want to import to the track and we want to close after export and we'll click OK. Now, this is going to take three minutes and whatnot. Honestly, I'm going to turn off real time processing because I doubt this is going to have any hiccups because this is just a beat and we haven't got a lot of stuff going on here. But if you do have a large file, you have a large song try to do it without real-time processing first then listen back and make sure that everything's working if it's not working use real-time processing and that will basically fix a lot of problems so let's click ok and i'll be back after this is done and then what we'll do is i'll bring this into a mastering channel and i'll show you how to deal with that but I'll also show you how you could have exported this into an MP3 file instead of a web. Okay, so as soon as that is finished export, it will bring up a window and it will basically show you exactly where this has been exported to. As you can see, here is our web file. Now, let me put that over there. 
if you wanted to export this as a mp3 file all you need to do is change this here from wave file to mp3 file and uh, with an mp3 file again you could use 44.1 or 48 to be honest like that really doesn't make that much of a difference in my opinion i think 44.1 is cd quality now bitrate you want to move this all the way to 320 kbps definitely don't want it any lower than that okay and then everything else is the exact same so i'm not gonna export this as well because it's not necessary but i will export our master track as an actual mp3 so i'm gonna go to our master right about now so here is our master track with basically nothing on it but i just want to show you how this process is done so you can get your track out and ready now you don't need to go up here what you need to do is you need to click on this button on digital release up here okay so here is where you'll go and here is basically the same thing you'll pick the location where you want this to be now i'm gonna go right back to my studio one tutorial files use that folder i'm gonna pick uh, mp3 this time although if i was doing this for real i would use a wave file but if I was doing a wave file and I was bouncing this down, I would make sure this is 24 bit resolution. You don't want it lower than that, but let's bring to bring it to MP3 file. We'll leave it at constant bit rate. We'll have it at 320 kbps. We'll leave it at 44.1 kilohertz because we don't really need to make it more than that. And everything else we'll leave alone. We don't need to add the artist to the file name or anything like that because honestly, after i export these files i like to go in there and deal with the metadata manually so i'll show you exactly how i do that but we don't generally don't need to use real-time processing for this i've never really had a problem with a mastering file messing up so we're gonna hit okay and this is gonna bounce down or export into a master file so here we have it in this folder it will create another folder and what it will do is it will create a mp3 file and an m3u file i'm not 100 percent sure what an m3u file is like i haven't really needed to look into it or anything like that but i just i just leave that out I don't touch that in it with the mp3 file what you do now is you right click you go to properties and first of all you can change the name here if you want to so we'll name this studio one tutorial and is that that looks like two spaces i guess it's not and then we'll go to details and here you can change the title and this is what is actually going to show up in platforms like spotify and apple music and that sort of stuff or itunes if you're using that or even you know the windows audio player so here we'll change it to studio one tutorial so that's the title then we can change the artists we can change the album it's in we can change the year we can change the track number and so on and so forth we don't want to change the bit rate or anything like that but this is where i would end i would edit my metadata but generally if you're gonna be bouncing an mp3 file the only reason I change my metadata is so that I can find it in my Spotify drafts because I like to export all my songs when I'm making them into an MP3 draft that I can then listen to in Spotify again and again before I get to the final process of recording it and releasing it and all that sort of stuff. But when I'm actually exporting it for the final time, I'll export it as a WAV file, I'll upload it to my distributor and I'll actually enter all the metadata there. So the metadata doesn't matter that much. It only matters for storage purposes and so that I can find stuff within Spotify. So as you can see now the title is studio one tutorial and it says contributing artist j carter ray and we are done we could now just go through this and change it to a wav file and we'd change this to 24 bit and we'd we could take off add artist to file name 
and that's pretty much done and then click OK and it will do the exact same thing. It will bring this up and it will give us a folder and then we could go in and change the metadata for that. So that is how you export your song from Studio One to an MP3 and to a WAV file okay now since you made it this far in the video i've got a free gift for you that you're going to love i want to give you five of my best rmb trap beats for absolutely free okay you're also going to be getting five of my basic licenses for these beats so you can make money from your music and upload your songs to spotify and streaming platforms and all that sort of stuff now these five basic licenses usually cost 29.95 on my site so you're getting over a hundred dollars of free beats here so don't miss out on this all you need to do is go to jcarterray.com forward slash free beats or click on the link in the description and follow the instructions okay now my question of the day is what are you working on at the moment are you working on a single are you working on an ep are you working on an album let me know in the comment section down below and if you've got any questions or any other tutorials you want me to make let me know in that comment section as well now i'll see you in the next video where you'll learn more about music online business and online marketing peace out